I'm your host, Nathan Gate. On this show, we run through three amazing wines brought in by three local McLaren Vale winemakers or South Australian winemakers. We pair it up with some amazing food. We give you a chance to win the wine and you also get, if you hang around long enough, you get a deal at the end to buy the amazing wine and either get a discount or maybe even a freebie included with it. So, all right, let's get into it. Today, I've got some amazing guests with me from a winery in McLaren Vale. Fox Creek is a family-owned, award-winning winery located in McLaren Vale, South Australia. Dr. Jim Watts, a specialist and professor of surgery, and his wife, a registered nurse, Helen, began the Fox Creek story in 1984. They purchased a 32-hectare farming property in McLaren Vale and went about planting vines on the black clay soils which were previously used for grazing sheep and growing barley. The vines thrived, bearing exceptionally high quality and sought after fruit. Ten years later, the family retained a parcel of fruit from the 94 vintage, which they lovingly crafted into quality wine so supreme that it was awarded the best wine of the 1995 McLaren Vale wine show. The transition from growers to winemakers began with that Fox Creek wine was born. In 1996, the cellar door was opened in a 19th century stone cottage built by the Malpas family in the 1880s. In early 2000, construction of the winery was completed and recently expanded on again in 2014. Now, it's on Malpas Road in McLaren Vale, in between McLaren Vale and Wollonga, heading down toward Wollonga from McLaren Vale, chuck a right, head down Malpas Road and you'll see the massive Fox Creek signs. And one of the most spectacular wineries that you'll see. I'm lucky enough to have Steve Soper and Ben Tanzer from Fox Creek, the winemakers, senior winemaker uh, Ben, winemaker Steve, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you Gary. Thanks heaps for coming on. No, no worries. Thanks for having now, me. Now, um, first of all, let's uh, tell us what you've brought on. What wines are we, uh, that we'll be showcasing tonight? So I think we've brought the 2017 Grenache, the 2019 Tempranillo, and the 2017 Short Row Shiraz. Mm, excellent. So, um, favourites are yours? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yep. oh, 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 everyone's a favourite, no doubt. Absolutely. They're like your babies, really, aren't they? They are, yep. Put that much time and effort into them. So um, what are we going to jump into first? Well, I've got a little sneaky couple of other things that we're working on, almost ready for bottles. So just two sneaky whites. Um, we come from a predominant red growing area, but we also do do some white So you brought, in, you brought in a surprise? Yeah, some little tank samples. So All right. We, um, yeah, we've got a... Um, um, 2020 McLaren Vale Savvy. And is uh, the Vale known for Savlon? No, it's not. not particularly. Um, and I sort of have a bit of background in the Adelaide Hills in terms of working up there for a little while, and um, the guys up there would probably shoot me down for saying we can make Savvy Blanc in McLaren Vale. But I, I think this is a really good wine. It's it's really fresh, it's bright, it's not filtered yet, so it's not... It's a bit cloudy. It's yeah, it's a little bit cloudy, cloudy. isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah, just a little sneaky something for you. Mm. So, um, where did the grapes come from, McLaren Vale? No, these actually come off our property, off the estate. So just behind the back of the dam there at Fox Creek. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's, we pick it in two different parcels, so we pick one a little bit earlier to get those little grassy green characters, and then we leave the other bit, the other half of the vineyard to try to get those more tropical notes. This year we actually had to pick them, we, I actually had to pick the, the vineyard the day after actually. Um, yeah, Tans, for different reasons. Tans and I were out there just making sure everything was looking good and sifting through the vines, so yeah, it's pretty cool. So uh, when I was at the winery the other day, was this what we were tasting out of the Yeah, we, no, we were tasting this on the on the tasting bench. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we are just having a bit of a play, making sure it's, it's sort of ready to go to bottle. Wow, it's really uh, crisp and fruity, and mm. it's good. Yeah, I think um, you boys are going to be a real winner there. And I've got I've got another little sneaky one as well. If we've got time, so Let's this, go for it. This one's sort of um, this one's a, an Italian variety, and 
So, Vermentino, it, it actually grows really well in McLaren Vale. Why? Um, it holds its acid and, it, and it's a, quite well balanced on the vine. And then it shows through um, in, into the glass. Jill was telling us last week, Jill Gordon-Smith, who was nice enough to come on our show, Italian wine expert, was telling us that the uh, Italian varieties are actually grow really well in our climate. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you think that um, this is wine is a representation of that? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd believe so. I, th I think it shows sort of, um, as well as being well grown in our, in our region, it, it sort of has that sort of sea and ocean aspect about it, which we're lucky enough to be right by the beach. Um, Nero, Jill mentioned last week. Yeah. Um, she showed me up about that one. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think this is a stunning um, example of white wine that we can grow in. Pop Clarabelle. Popular wine? Um, it's getting there. It's seen, more seen and more. to be. It's more and more. Yeah, it's starting to. They're starting to win some, some medals and stuff at our wine show. I mean, the thing with Vermentino is that because it's a southern Italian variety, based uh, originally, you know, it really holds its acid in warmer climates. So in a climate like in uh, McLaren Vale, yeah, it can hang on to its acid. Whereas you know, varieties like Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay tend to drop drop their acids as the sugars rise. Um, this tends to hang on to a bit a bit more. We muck around with this a little bit, actually. A few years ago, I started um, fermenting a portion of this like a red wine, so on skins mm. and leaving on leaving it on skins rather than just pressing it off straight, you know, crushing and, and pressing the, the grapes. We actually ferment a, bit, a little a portion of this on skins and blend it back in. So obviously, this is uh, 2020, yep. and um, bottled soon. Yeah, it's to me, it's ready. Yeah, it's going down the line next week. So um, just getting. Yeah, final touches, making sure it's ready to go. Yeah. I reckon you're on a real winner there too. That um, maybe Fox Creek one day might be known for, known for its whites just as much as its uh, reds. Oh, we've got a bit of work to do there. Well, I don't know. Thank you. I think that, um, and you're dispelling a myth that uh, whites can't be uh, grown in McLaren Vale, especially the Sav Blanc. Yeah, and there's a, there's quite a few people who are, are pushing the envelope there, so it's good to see like it's a it's a bit of a group effort between all the winemakers. So. Awesome. Well, thanks for that little surprise. Oh, that's all right. Putting uh, the, the whites on the map from um, Fox Creek. 2020, both of them will be available. Any other varieties that we've worked on? Yeah, Any other? What other whites? whites? Yeah. Uh, we make a Chardonnay. A Chardonnay. Yeah. Actually, so I think I say out of 2020, yeah. uh, out of 2020, it's a Sauvignon Blanc, the Vermentino and Chardonnay, and also our sparkling white, which is an Arctic Fox. Yes. Which is predominantly Vermentino, actually. So um, we might have to um, have a look in the bottle shop. We may just sell the door for that one. No worries. All right. So um, should we jump into a red? Yep. Yeah. Let's get started on the Grenache. On the Grenache. Yeah. We're going to same glass or new glass. Um, same glass. Same, same glass. glass. We're not fussy. No. Now on this show, we're not a wine tasting show, so we're more of a wine drinking show. So we have a little bit of more than a tasting. That's all right, Soaps is driving anyway. Yeah, soap, oh, give Soaps <laughs> a little bit. Then. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Excellent. Put that over here so that people can see what, what we're drinking. All right, so I'm going to have a... Have a sniff. Um, we've got some food to go with this. So tonight we've got... Um, paired with the Grenache, we've got some um, toasted um, French bread or ciabatta with some tomato and the jamon. Um, How do you pronounce that? The jamon. Jamon? What was it? What was it? Jamon, I know. Jamon. It's what it's in uh, Italian cured meat, I'm guessing. Uh, Spanish. Yeah, by Spanish. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Um, so these are kind of mm. Spanish varietals that we're looking at, these first two wines. Yeah. So, it's more of a lot of style, I suppose. Um, this. This wine is grown off um, almost 100-year-old bushfine Grenache. And um, um, wh where? On McLaren Vale? Of in course. McLaren Vale, yep. Yeah. Yep. In Mercury Road? M just off of Mercury Road, yep. Mm. So, um, 100 years. Almost, bush wines. Almost. Bush wines, yeah. yeah Get a little bit of irrigation now, but not much. Um, just to keep, to tick them over. Pretty gnarly old little vines. Um, yeah, obviously you've got to hand pick them because you can't run a machine through or anything like that. And... Yeah, we look after this, this bread as it comes in, so it's kind of got that sort of redness about it, that, I don't know, um, almost 
not rhubarb, but yeah, cherry, lot. cherry, red fruit. Right, we're interactive show, as if you've seen the show before. If you haven't, you've got two great winemakers here. Ask them a question, and um, if you throw up a decent question, you might even win a bottle of wine. So um, with the Grenache, the colour looks great. Yep. It, it is quite light. Yep. Very easy to drink. Very easy yep. to drink. Um, and what are we pairing it up with? The Jarman or the Jarman. <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and the toast. All right, who's going to go first? Oh, I'll go. I'll get stuck into this. Yeah, well, I'm going to, I'm going to have a little bit as well. So tell me about um, how many years have Fox Creek been doing the Grenache for? We've been doing it for, um, only for a few years, a uh, single. We've been making Grenache for quite a number of years, but we've, ne we've never made a single um, varietal wine. So the first one was in 2016 off this vineyard. Um, this is the second one. Um, yeah, so obviously we've gone into the 20s now, but yeah. so this is the fourth year we've made it, but um, this is the second one we made, yeah. So um, usually Grenache, a drink now, or? Um, I was like, th this one could probably go down for, for a number of years. Yeah? Um, yeah, I think. Um, it could, looks great now. Yeah, I think so too. Um, but it can definitely, um, be selling for at least five to probably eight, maybe longer years, yeah. I reckon. And it's um, a real change of taste with the uh, drinking it after the meat. Yeah, it's, yep. It um, changes the taste uh, remarkably. Not that it wasn't good in the first place, but... Yeah, maybe a bit of that fat sort of settles the wine down and, and, and gives the sort of the tannin and, and all of that, just completes the wine a little, little bit more. Hmm. And the cool thing, we sort of spoke about this as well before we came on, um, our... McLaren Vale, we sort of use a bit of patchwork, so we source a little bit of fruit from a few other... We've got our main vineyard that's the 97-year-old 90, vines, but we also source a little bit of fruit from elsewhere that mm. gives us a little bit of fruit lift and, and stuff like that. Um, but I just wanted to point out, um, there's a minute 40 left, so um, if you make a comment or have a question... Yeah, far um, away, far away, some questions. Yeah. Tans loves this stuff, so... Um, yeah. Yeah. Get, a, get around it and you can win a bottle of this Grenache and try it for yourself. Mm. So. Yeah, so there is a little bit of blue at spring, like Sos was alluding to, there is a little bit of blue at springs in this. So um, it's a slightly different style to what, what the stuff you get down on the Nurture Road on the sort of the heavier so soil. Um, the stuff you get up the top is um, more, what's that saying, sorry? Um, on a sandy sort of soil, so you get more floral lifted Grenache. Mm. Got a, is this, is this the... Uh, it's a comment, just say, saying it sounds fun playing with the different varieties. Um, yeah, um, the Vermentino that we tried before, um, the Grenache, um, the Tempranillo that we'll get to soon, and the Nero that we have as well. Like, well, there's all these little bits and pieces that we get to play with, and um, yeah, it just, I don't know, it makes it enjoyable for us making many different wines, I guess. So. Mm. so uh, where do you reckon in the world makes the best Grenache? McLaren Vale. Yeah. Okay. Besides Fox no, Creek. No, 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 seriously. No. No. Seriously? What? No, no, I'm not saying we'd make the best no, Grenache. But okay, but... But I, know, I, I actually think well, some of the best Grenaches in the world come from McLaren Vale. We've yep. got some of the oldest vines in the world. Yep. Um, so... Yeah. So where would... Where James else? James Halliday says that. So. Where else? Well, you'd... you'd where else in the world makes... So Southern France. Southern yeah. France? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're known for it. Yeah. Known for their blends and, and that sort of thing. Um... But yeah, as, as as far as straight Grenache goes, I, I think we, we the, bro, the Bross well. might the Bross might argue that no, um, no doubt. Um, but we are very spoiled, and like uh, you said, you absolutely. get quality fruit from Blue Springs and obviously over hundred year vines. Yeah, and what a great tasting wine! Thanks. So I just can't believe how easy it is to drink. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, it's going down pretty easy. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Andrew Sell, um, how you going? Um, he needs to try this winner. Um, thank you. He needs to try it, does he? Yeah. He might even be oh, a winner. Oh, Andrew Sell's a winner. Okay, Andrew Sell's a winner. I'm good. All right, we're having a, few, a bit of an issue with the comments uh, coming up, so bear with us. We uh, might make the odd mistake with the comments. but So Andrew Sell, good on you, mate. Yeah. He's uh, taking himself away a bottle of the Grenache. Yeah. 
And what he's got to do is uh, pop in and grab it. And we'll um, get in contact with him on the socials and let him know. So, great start, fellas. Yeah, thanks, mate. So, with the um, Fox Creek, obviously, quite prolific on socials. Um, we've got Facebook accounts, LinkedIn accounts, Twitter. And yep. even um, Instagram, of course. Yep. Yep. And um, comments straight to the seller door. You also can buy from um, the website. Yep. 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 And is there a uh, wine club? There is. There circle is. Club. Sir, well, yeah. It's called the Circle Club. Right. Yeah. So there is a wine club there. And do they get special invites to things, deals? Yeah, so, yep. they, so um, when when you come to sell it all, there's a there's a small fee for tasting, but being part of the seller the circle on, club, yeah, yeah, yeah straight in. Red. Um, not necessarily, I don't think, Cameron. Uh, does an old vine mean a grungy red? Um, not necessarily. Um, some of the old vines give you give you my nice sort of lifted floral wines, but. This Grenache does give you, uh, these, these old wines probably do give you a more sort of grungy Grenache, I reckon. I think it's that concentration as well. Mm. Um, the older vines don't produce as much fruit per se, and um, mm. yeah, so you're, you're just getting that solid. More concentration. Yeah. yeah. Power. So yes. Well, well. Grungy is a weird, uh, a, a good use Well, of actually, the, bit the, the, the old vines that, come, that went into this, that went in uh, from the Bluet Springs is probably almost as old as, as that. And they are lifted and floral and, and light, um, whereas this stuff... I wouldn't, really I, wouldn't call, I wouldn't call it a grungy wine. Though. No, 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 no. Very no, light and no, no. easy to drink. Yeah. So I want more of it. Anyway. You want more of it? Well, yeah, right, let's go again. We can crack something else instead, all right? Yeah. What have we got now? That's the Tempranillo. So it's the 2019 Tempranillo. Ooh. I want to slide your glass over so that uh, it's going to be and uh, tell me, tell me about this. It looks a lot darker straight yeah. away. Just pouring it. So this is a, um, a Spanish variety. Yeah. Um, grown by. Uh, oh no, that's nothing. Too. Grown by actually uh, uh, someone that's been on your show before, actually Michael Petrucci. Yeah, I want to say good day to Mick. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good bloke. You want to say good day to him? Yeah, he's he's a good yeah, bloke. So Michael actually grew this. Yeah, Michael and Joe grew this fruit. Um, right, so yeah, we actually ran into Joe today. No, I don't talk to Joe about the show. He's a bit sore about not coming on. No, oh, really? Bro, I'm bringing yeah. Michael on instead you of Joe. Have, you wouldn't have fitted his mow on this one. Uh, I would have turned into the Joe show. Yeah. It would have. But yeah, Michael, great. Um, oh, they've grown some great fruit, haven't yeah. they? G'day, Robbie. Um, rosé, we don't do rosé. So um, <laughs> we get that question all the time. <laughs> and um, it depends who you ask. But um, yeah, sorry. No rosé. Yeah, sorry, Robbie. Robbie. Mick is watching, we, is he? We, all right, we, be careful what we say about no, the trenches. No, no. Then, all right, Mick, Mick's online watching. So should we talk about quickly talk about? Um, what yeah, we're no, talk. We're preparing this with a with with a few of these pickle yeah, yeah. bits and pieces and my olives and and Tans's, um homemade olives, homemade olives. Well, let's talk about the wine first. So this is Tempranillo. So obviously, grows just, just off Mercury Road, right, actually. So a couple of torpedo kicks from that Grenache vineyard. Right. Um, this this uh, vineyard. It's like a uh, southerly facing slope on this old sand dune. Um, so, just uh, Michael's Spanish head. variety, like you Spanish said. variety. Yeah. Straight away, my comment would be smooth. Yep. A really Silky smooth. Tannins. Yeah. Silky yep. tannins. That's probably more wine lingo, but. It's an earlier, earlier ripening variety, so it tends to be one of the first reds that we bring into the winery. Um, and that's a good thing, especially in, our, in, the, in warm. In warm um, Vintages, especially like 2019, which was quite dry, dry, warmish vintage. Um, yeah, so and I suppose for, this is one of the one of the wines. I suppose we, it, it almost and, and with the Grenache, it's almost you know as far as wine making goes, it's hands off. You know, we bring it in, we crush it, we ferment it um, delicately, it. we yeah. put it to barrel, and then we really don't. We might rack it once, and we really don't touch it after yeah. that. Um, and, and we just we didn't even filter this wine. We just uh, was that because you didn't have to because the fruit was so good. Or yeah, and we didn't we didn't want to muck around with it. Um, we were just really happy with it. Weren't yeah, we? we, I'd have to say like like reserve Shiraz and that aside, this would be probably one of Tans's favourite drinks. I reckon like Absolutely. He, he loves it. Goes home and has a 
has a half a bottle. We I've already, oh, my allocation's already sort of gone. <laughs> so this the, is, is your fa one of your faves? That's oh, one of my faves, yeah. Really, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I think it's because of the fruit that's so generous and it's a little bit savoury. Oh, my God. Oh. Gary? Gary Banzo, how... Gary Banzo, how long have we been making this wine? This is our second year. Yeah. Yeah, so not long. Yeah. So we got that, yeah, our, yeah, was that our first year? Yeah. Second um, year. We did the 18, the Yeah, we did the 18, and, yeah, and sorry, yeah, I'm getting confused. We did the 2020 this year, so yeah. this is our third year. This is, this is, yeah, our third year of making it this year, but we've, we've, uh, this, this one's is, the this second year second, we're drinking. This is the yeah. second we're drinking, yeah. yeah. And once again, was it used uh, more as a blend before, or? No, we never took it before. No? Uh, we, no. Just, we just sort of, the first year that we had it, we sort of had a bit of, like, uh, Mick said that it was available and we could have a little bit yeah. and we just had a play. Cheers, Mick. We had a play with it and um, yeah, we sort of yeah from the get go we went hands off. We don't want to don't want to stuff with this because the fruit was really good and yeah, like it's a it's a really drinkable, smashable wine. Didn't want to upset the Petrucci there, nah. did you? No, fair yeah. enough. Didn't want to. Oh, we already took a little bit of Nero off the Petrucci, so you know, we we're always talking to Michael and um, yeah, so we grab a little bit of temp and now we grab a little bit of other bits and pieces. So what are, what are we, um, what would you, in a perfect world, pair with this wine, food-wise? I actually think we've got it. Yeah, I think yeah. like tapas and this wine. So yeah. my olives, especially. Yeah. So Tan, you've been going on about your olives. Are these actually your olives? No, they were, my brother-in-law grew them. But oh, I, your brother-in-law. Yeah, but they only, I didn't do the Sicilian ones, just the, um, do you yeah. like olives? I do actually love olives. They're pretty salty. Oh, they're good. They're very good. Let's see what the um, flavour change is like. Mm. Another question? Alan uh, uh, Pode. Looking forward to a drop of Christmas. Alan yeah, thanks, Alan. I think, yeah, get around it. Christmas yeah. time. Paul, was it? Sorry. Christmas. It's just, just the way the comments are written, so... Yeah, right. Maybe we'll get someone who's not dyslexic for right about next time. So, talking about drinking this wine when it's a bit warmer as well, like the alcohol is not paper. huge. Like it's it's well balanced in terms of when it comes off off the vineyard. So it's not a, a, a really hot wine. So you can sort of drink it in this style, of like when it is a bit warmer, come spring and that sort of thing. So yeah. sit around on a hmm. sunny arvo and. So it doesn't doesn't have to be uh, by the fire, middle of winter wine. No, 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 could be though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. With a nice tap. You could actually, you, to be honest, you could actually chuck it in the fridge for a cup yeah. for half an hour and chill it down slightly. Yeah, I reckon. Someone might have mentioned that before. Um, now we've got um, obviously the opportunity to win this wine, so keep the questions coming, and um, you got a minute, minute twenty, so fire the questions through. Any and. Any technical questions, Tans is sort of up for those, so no, yeah. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll go. See so if you can stump the wine makers, that'd <laughs> yeah. be a, a good, great question. Yeah, that'd be right. Yeah, that, that'd, that'd, win, that'd win you a bottle. We were supposed to put the prosciutto with this. Were we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I better. I better. Oh. Yeah, I reckon that's good. I reckon a little, little line of acid just cuts through that. That much shooter. Keyshan, how do bale temps differ? Vale. Vale. Sorry, my English yeah. is terrible. All right, um, so how do McLaren Vale? So how do we temps differ? Um so um I'm guessing in comparison to Spain. Let's yeah. go. In um, comparison to Spain. Rioja is where this wine is known to come from. Um it's quite high altitude, so we don't have that. We're right by the ocean. Um, but we've got that maritime climate, so it's very consistent all the time. Um, but it sort of keeps us a bit cooler as well with the sea breezes during the harvest period. Um, but I think being where we are, we're sort of very lucky. Like if you're going into the hills, you're getting frosts. And if you're going up to the brosty, you're getting a lot more of that intense heat. So we get hot, but yeah, we, we're pretty lucky where we are, mm, I think. And um, many other... Is it a variety that's taking off, you think? Oh, it's been around for quite a number of years. Um, yeah. Quite a few producers yep. um, in McLaren Yeah. And, and yeah. What, what about um, other South Australian producers 
other areas. Yeah, so they do grow it up in the Adelaide Hills and stuff, and, and people make rosé and, and different blends and stuff. Yeah. Right, so we got a winner, Keith Shan. Keith Shan. Is the winner. Get in contact with us on the socials and um, come and collect your awesome bottle. Um, pretty easy, really, to win. Throw some more questions up, and um, you will have the chance to win an awesome bottle of Fox Creek wines. So I must say... You happy with that? I am. I re the tapas, really, obviously. Spanish wine, yep. tapas, you boys have done really well. And uh, as, we said, as we said before, um, you can contact the winery, buy online. Yep. Give them a call. Yep. Yep. And follow the socials, and there's plenty of deals coming up pretty regularly. Yep. Um, so... Been lots of COVID deals. Yeah, lots yeah. of COVID deals, and we've been supported very well because of those. So, yeah, feel yeah. free to shout out to um, your supporters during COVID because um, the general gist was you've been selling a fair bit of wine still, and yeah, uh, really supported by people that love the winery, which um, is a general consensus of the whole McLaren. The community's really banded together and bought. And we've been at home drinking wine in front yeah. of the fire. So, yeah, I think I think I think. Um, you know, every, everyone's just got behind their local producers and um, supported, supported. You know, right. The, not only McLaren, but right. You know, the, the, the wine industry in general around Australia has been supported, from what I've heard, anyway. Yeah. Well, definitely picked up a lot more dryness toward the end of the glass and after eating the prosciutto yeah. and that with it. That's um, yeah. It's um, that savoury tannin mm. coming through. It's, yeah. Excellent. No, mate, you boys have um, done yourselves. So um, we're going to have to um, crack the Shiraz, I reckon. Yep. What have we got here? It's just short row Shiraz. 2017 short row Shiraz. Yep. yep. All right. So um, I'm looking at all over the bottles, gold medals everywhere. So obviously you boys have done all right with this uh, wine. This is our um, sort of uh, our traditional... McLaraval Shiraz, I suppose. Yeah. Um, it's more of your old school um, Shiraz, so, um, you know, rich, ripe fruit. Um, a lot of power. A lot of power. A powerful McLaraval Shiraz, which, um, you know, which our region is, is known for. Yeah. And a, a, the reason why a lot of people, what these uh, ones, a lot of people come spend. back. Yeah. So, um, a, pa a powerful Shiraz. Yep. What, do we, what, what do we mean by that? Powerful in fruit, tannin. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, just smell it and, and really, put it really, into your mouth. Really dark, isn't it? Yeah. Dark, yeah. You were talking about a, a wine that you want to drink at, at, in winter around the fire. This is, this is down that line. Like, yeah. It's a solid wine. Um, we've got the, some chorizo and, and... Yeah, so this is going with chorizo and... And the, the cheese. cheese. Right. But like if if time wasn't against us and you were you had the Weber going and then had a nice bit of Hey, that's bit not of my ribeye. Fault. Oh no, oh, no, no it was no, my no. fault. Right, right, okay. I'll take the blame. But um yeah, like something solid and rich would match really well. Oh right, you can just say Jerry. If Jerry had the Weber firing when he should yeah. have, and then we could have had yeah. a nice ribeye. Yeah. With it, yeah. it would have been absolutely perfect. Charred ribeye. Right. That's the difference between a bush fine and a well, they've all been planted, uh, PJ. Um, yeah, what's the difference between a bush vine and a planted vine? Well, um, they've all been planted, With the, the vines. It's just yeah, some, what are you some, boys some, 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 are tre some are on trellises. Yeah. And the old school way, and I mean, some people are still planting Grenache around, even McLaren now, in, as, as bush vines. Um, the other ones just aren't, they're just not on a trellis. So, you know, the normal vineyard to see with the posts and everything. Yeah. They're just planted straight into the ground and prune and they're just right really nice close to the ground they, they in a bush style so they're just like a little path. bush they yeah. grow their own and is way. it just Grenache that grows better bush or are these are other varieties of um, grapes that no well, overseas they grow all sorts of grapes that like, um, bush vines don't they yeah so um, but us in the McLaren Valley? no there's bush vine Shiraz in McLaren Valley as well yeah um yeah but there's the old stuff that's still left is probably Grenache and Shiraz probably yeah. left yeah not a bad question really no, that's so a lot of people when we talked about yeah. bushfire wouldn't have really known what you were talking about. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. Not on the trellis, low to the ground. Yeah, yeah. gnarly, just growing yeah. everywhere. Old, usually an older yeah. vine, is it? Or yeah, well, I mean, when mechanisation means that you know you, you can't you can't um, machine pick a, a bush bush vines. Yeah, um, they need to be hand picked, um, which is a lot more expensive. Obviously, yeah. But you know, if you get the right quality fruit and everything from the other side, it's worth it. Yeah. Now this this Shiraz, big, big. Mm. All my, most McLaren Valley Shirazes are big. It's what we're really well known for. Really dark. Yep. Thera. So th th this really is a blend of, um, like the the whole the whole. Uh, oh no. Thanks, Kerry. Looks like a nice drop. Yep. Um, yep. I'd say so as well. Mm. Does does look really. So it really is a blend of the um, the whole of McLaren. Valley. So, you know, short reef is we take it from right up near Selix all the way down to Kangarilla. Yeah. Um, so all different vineyards as well as our own estate vineyards. And, and then um, you blend the different yeah. Shirazes together to make. Yeah. The reason, the reason though, it's called Short Row is on um, on the property leading away from Helen Watts's house. There's um, a bunch of um, vines that are on trellises, not bush vines, um, and they're they're our short row of Shiraz. And um, as demand grew for this wine, we sort of had to bring other bits and pieces into the into the mould. So the wine outgrew the vineyard basically. And um, yeah, so we're sort of keeping in style with what we had before, but um, yeah, just keeping the same style and yeah, it's just a big punch of wine. So we're in the, when we're in the barrel hall, yep. um, ha having a tour, drinking down the barrel, thanks for that. That was a, um, really enjoyed myself looking around yeah, the winery nice. and just how picturesque it was. And I just noticed couldn't believe the amount of barrels yeah. were, that were in the barrel hall. So it's kind of scary, isn't it? You, you said a couple of thousand. Um, there's about two thousand barrels in our barrel shed, and um, per ba but they're not cheap, are they? No. Per barrel, what are they? It's, it's, uh, no, no, they're not cheap. They're, they're well, I'm trying to get that. It's, the it's biggest a, expense of our wine. There's a f fair amount of cost in those barrels yeah. in the. Yeah. yeah, and it depends on size. So you've got we we use three different sizes of barrels and we've got barriques, hogsheads and punch, uh, punchins so they range between roughly 200 to 500 litres and for a hogshead which is the in-between barrel uh, 1500 roughly depending on where the wood comes from, how it's treated, the cooper and there's yeah lots of different variations. A lot more for some barrels. Yeah, yeah um, it's amazing the amount of well, people think well, why am I paying Thirty dollars for a bottle of wine. Yeah. Well, the love that goes into it, the amount of cost that goes into it, like, and we're really lucky in McLaren Vale. Well, thirty dollars yeah. for it, you can get an actually crack a bottle yeah. of wine for thirty, forty, yeah. forty dollars. Um, what price point would we we, we be at from a cellar door for the Shiraz? Thirty eight, forty bucks. Yeah, you're you're probably asking the wrong the wrong tip. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah, it'd be, it's it's shit. about that forty. We're not going to hold. We're not going to hold. I don't know. I don't actually know. I thought last time I think it was it's about thirty eight. Yeah. Forty. It's around thirty eight, thirty or forty bucks a bottle. Yeah. Absolutely bargain. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, like, so you nice. can really tell with this wine. Like, I mean, I look at this one. I was only looking at the sixteen a couple of days ago. And they're, 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 well, we did the tasting not long ago. Mm -hmm. They're quite different wines, and it really is a lot of vintage. The vintage variation, like 17, was such a different, even though they're both large vintages as far as, as, far as crop level goes. Um, 17 is quite a different wine. Yep. Um, no, th this, this is really. So, what's your um, guesstimation of how the 20 is going to be? So, we're nowhere near um, as much fruit as usual. No, no. But the quality of fruits. Pretty good. Ah, really, really good, really yeah. good. Um, in the sense, it's what makes Fox Creek unique. Oh, tan. Tans first. Oh, that one's trying to announce tans. Get around. Let it. Um, Beside you two. Yeah, well, I was going to. Yeah, well, I've so sold on that bit. Beside yeah. you two. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I just think, you know, I just think for us, you know, we, we've been a real. Um, uh, blending winery in, in a way, so so we've really emphasised, you know, grabbing stuff from all all over the place, um, and lots of wineries do that. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if we can call ourselves unique in any way, but um, I mean the family, the whole family thing, um, yeah, with the Watts family, that, that they've grown this winery from, you know, they weren't wine people, and they've become wine people, yeah, um, through through the through their 
Um, and one of their I mean, daughters became a winemaker. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She, yeah, she owns Molly B, Molly Duca. So, um, you know, they, they, they've just they've grown into the wine industry, and now they're they're quite you know a big part of um, the Clarence Vale uh, wine industry. I'm not sure if people realise how big it is either. They actually blew me away while we were going for a walk around how yeah. big a. Like you think Fox Creek? Yeah, it's a well-known wine, but um, how big the actual winery and that was, and how big a obviously your contract makes some wine for some other people yeah, as well. But, other people. So um, don't forget, throw your comments out, and um, you can win a bottle of the Shiraz. Yep. Great wine. Oh, Do you like it? Oh, which one's oh, your favourite, Gody? Oh, I prefer the lighter ones, so I'd probably yep. say the Grenache was yep. uh, my favourite, but they're all quality wines. Yep. And I'm getting a bit of flack from not rubbishing any McLaren Vale wines. Yep, fair enough. Well, and I've said to the boys in the US, we haven't had anybody other than McLaren Vale on yet, so no. there is no bad wine in McLaren Vale. Just different grades of good yep. is what, what I'm experiencing. And we are very lucky. We've got amazing fruit. And as the show expands, we'll uh, get some people from the hills on and we'll get the um, guys from the Coonawarra. We might have a um, lady sneaking up from Rove. Yeah, awesome. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and, um, and then what we might do um, down the track is we might do an international night. Well, hey. And we might bring in the best of international wines and bring some of your winemakers back and then do a session on... You could fly some of the international winemakers. Oh, well, once we're making some coin, we probably could. <laughs> you know. But no, we can't because of COVID. Oh, of course, oh, yeah. yeah. sorry, yeah, no. Yeah, COVID. Borders are shut, so Actually, we can't we're not there. Yeah, we're social distancing our camera. Oh, we are. It's just the cameras. Oh, okay. Like yeah. So the winner for the Shiraz, Stephen Crager. Did I say that right? Crager. Crager. Good work, lads. Thank you. Um, appreciate it. No, good work. Thanks, Steve. Come in, let us know. We'll hit you up on socials. Come in and grow it. Got we'll take a photo. We'll post it up on the socials. A pretty easy way to get a, a forty dollars bottle of wine, anyway. So we've got another question from Cameron, Cameron Marlowe. Marlo. What's the most? What's the perfect Shiraz growing weather? Apart, would you say apart from the fruit set last year, would you, would you say this year was a really good year for Shiraz? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, I, yeah, I would. I reckon 17 was pretty pretty good. Like we had a really wet winter and spring, and then it, we dried out. We had a little bit of a rain event, but then it, we had a. It's a really slow. I think with any great variety, if you have a long, slow, not too hot, not too hot, not too cold, just a nice mild ripening weather. Yeah. Um, that's 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 the perfect. Yeah. Um, no, no, visit, no yeah. Because then you can pick the grapes at the perfect time. You don't have to go. Oh my God, it's going to be. 50 degrees next week. Yeah. So um, when you say ripe, ripening weather, when is around about the ripening weather month-wise? Um, well, it depends on the variety. Yeah, well, um, around about. But, um, yeah, so, so McLaren Vale, you know, when I first started in McLaren Vale, it was probably sort of late late February, sort of, or even the start of March, we started picking. Yeah, back in my day. Um, but now, you know, we, the, you know, it's not... We pick in the first week of February. Sometimes, sometimes we've even picked our, our whites in the last week of January. Like the season has moved forward, but I mean, seven, in seventeen, that wine, we didn't start picking till last week of February, I think. Yeah, I can't remember something like that. That was a uh, quite so a, it was large a late, late, one, late year. Two. Yeah. Seventeen was quite a so big. And, and year. the fruit, the fruit sort of starts to change colour around January ish, and then yeah, you can pick through until. He's all smashed my ankle. Like Haven't you? Touched it, Kerry. Kerry Lamb said she loves a good Shiraz. Good on you, Kerry. Yeah, well, if she loves a good Shiraz, she would be um, well worth going down to uh, Fox Creek and grabbing a bottle. Pop in and see Georgie. We, and we make a number of Shirazes, so. Yeah, so um, when I was in the winery on Malpas Road, yep. I think it says a story about Malpas. Yep. And we're talking the um, original. Old Henry, Malpas. Old Henry, yep. old, the old original postmaster of yep. Wollonga. Yep. And I, it, George even showed me in the cellar door, you've got some an old like, letterbox design up on the wall to make it look like the old postmaster's yeah. house. And um, being a, a bit of a military buff, I was quite chuffed that he's... And there's a wine made after Henry, isn't there? Yeah, the postmaster. The postmaster. Yes, yeah. 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 And, and one then after his son. After his lad. Yep. Who, the Jason. Yep. Who was a... Uh, Soldier? Yeah, in the military. Battle of the Somme? Military Cross. Yeah. And won a military cross. Yeah. Yeah. James. Which James is pretty impressive, isn't it? It is extremely yeah. impressive. Yeah. And uh, 
an absolutely um, horrible, horrible battle. Yeah. To win a, uh, such an award in such a battle is um, remarkable, really. Mm. And so we've got another wine uh, named after him as well. Ben, so, have another, f- do right, I have another so, favourite from the range? Yeah, what's your favourite? I've got one more question for both of you before we wrap up. Sorry, I thought... One will be, who would be your major influence in winemaking? So I'll ask that to you first, Hansi. Who, who, who's your major influence? Um, oh. <laughs> oh, there's, there's probably a couple. Show, but, some, um, show some love. Yeah, no, I reckon uh, like probably, probably my is Scott, Scott Zerna. From South Coast Brewing now, he's probably he's been he's been a major mentor for me. So um, yeah, for me he's been he's probably been a big influence on me. Good bloke, really good bloke. Oh, he's no, yeah, well, well, we probably shouldn't say that while we're alive, <laughs> are we? So I um, hope you know he, he wouldn't be watching this anyway. Yeah, he would. Yeah, yeah, no, he's on in the couple yeah, weeks. Right. He better be. Oh, is he? Better be watching or we'll bump him. Yeah, right. <laughs> Brett will be watching anyway. So and yours. Um, I'd, I'd have a couple as well, but yeah, well, I'd have a couple too. But yeah, but I'll well, keep, just go. We're just going one. I'll yeah, keep I'll it to I'll one. See. And um, the previous to to Fox Creek was working with Lee up at Winter State. That, the grenade. You want the grenade? I was going to keep that for myself. Oh, oh, do oh, I well, we've got another bag. Yeah, oh, it's all right. So, yeah, so Lee Ratsma. Um, yeah, he's a good good mate of mine. And um, and where was he from? Um, he, so he's up at Winter State at Woodside. Um, making some pretty good booze up there. And, and you um, used to, you, we're, gonna, we're cracking on the Grenache, you can't have any because you're drawing. Yeah, I've, I've got to take it away. No, you take it. I might try the that. Grenache of the chore though. There's, there's no reason, go wrong. There's no reason why I wouldn't. No. So um, you used to drive all the way from Selix up to Woodside? Yeah, so I used to drive 750Ks a, a week just to go wow. to work. Um, but yeah, no, it was worth it and learned a lot. But yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right. How many wines oh, in your range? Oh, that is a good question. Jeez, Luke. I think it's that's a, a bit few. Um, well, should we need to them? About 20. I don't know if we need to name them all. No. Um, There's, yeah, there'd be... Oh. We have a fair range. So we've got, a, we've got about five whites, maybe about 13, 14 reds, and a, a late harvest. Yeah, about 20. Yeah. So yeah. about God. 20 or that. What's your uh, flagship? Our res- What's the top of the range? Reserve. Reserve. Yeah. So that's length and... Classified, so that's in the outstanding range. If Langtons, they, I don't know, they classify all the wines, all, all the well cellared wines every year, and yeah, we do pretty pretty well uh, out of it. That's ninety bucks a bottle. No. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Sorry, and you can get that Whoops. in Magnums as well, um, and then yeah, like our our Red Baron, that'd be about eighteen bucks a bottle for our. Depends on where you get it. Yeah, but um. Yeah, so we've basically got the reserve. It drops down to the old vine, which is a single vineyard. Um, yeah. Under, hun- over 100-year-old vines we, we, we sourced that fruit from. And then... So, um, when's the cellar door reopening? And, um, it's already reopened. It's yeah. already open. Last Kevin, week, going to see last, Georgie? Last weekend, yeah. Last yeah. weekend, yeah. So, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, I think we can't, right. can't have many yeah, there because it's, it's, it's small. It's bookings though. only now, yeah. and it's a set tasting at the moment, so... That's what we're looking for. Yeah, it's yeah. it's. Um, Keep Georgie happy. We wanted us to make sure yeah. we mentioned. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, no, no. The, um, yeah, the, the cellar doors open and uh, rearing. Yeah, so I actually I, really. I, 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 I enjoyed myself the down there. Yeah, it's um, a great cellar door. It is it's sitting by the fire. It's, it's beautiful. Not bad at all. Uh, picturesque. I like the um, statues around the place as well. Yeah, the gardens. The wood are carvings. Cool to hang out in. So um, we've, got, we've got a bit of a special coming up as well, haven't we? For people yep. that have been watching, they can yep. um, get a special. Yep. We'll probably go on and we might leave that right till the end. Might have to, um, first of all, thank both of you for coming on. It's, no it's easy talking to you both. Something about, you obviously both love it. You're both quality winemakers and the wines you brought on was superb. Thank you. W- wouldn't have minded if you brought on the top of the range one, but maybe next time. Um, so that wasn't our ne- choice, actually. It wasn't. No. You, you would have if it was your choice. But yeah. So next week, we've got Mark and Lisa McCarthy from McCarthy's Orchard. Good people. Good Great people. people. Yeah, get around the bathtub. Yeah, you know, we yeah. See, we've seen yeah. him. He like, doesn't mind interviewing people in the bath. Check out their social media. Yeah, their social media is great. We went to the cellar door today. Daughter riding a horse while we were there into the cellar door. Yeah. Just, you know, something different. 
great, there she is, great fruit, great, um, their cider was direful. Yeah. And um, their wines are in some of the best restaurants in Australia as well. And top it off, great people. Oh, great people. In, even if you go in there a little bit early, you can go in and get a really good coffee as well. Yeah, she was talking the coffees up. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a I've never spot. been there. I should go there. You should go there. Yeah. You, what you should go is go there and go in the bathtub. Nah, no, don't you No, dare. you should. Jody, don't you dare. I think we'll bring that up no, with Mark mate. next week. Jerry, Mark next week. <laughs> no so, way, mate. So what we got, excellent special, really. Yep. Purchase any six bottles from the cellar door. Go down and yep. see Georgie and yep. the girls. And uh, purchase any six bottles. Go yep. down for a tasting. Don't have to book in a tasting if you're just going to purchase. If you know what you want, go yep. in and you can get it. But book in a tasting, buy six bottles, get a bottle free. Awesome. Get what a great deal. Yeah. And make sure you mention SA Wine Weekly. Yeah. Um, so they, they know that you've come down from there. Book in, have a tasting because it's a great experience. Yeah. And um, thank you again, both of you, for coming on. It's been um, all too easy. No worries, mate. Thanks, and um, thanks, everybody, for watching. And um, same time next week, 8 o'clock on Wednesday nights, SA Wine Weekly, YouTube and Facebook. Thanks very much for watching.